The owners of this mall describe it as a bright new star in the shopping center galaxy. But how well this mall stacks up against the other ones will depend entirely on how the customers like it. We hope that you enjoy it. I hope you brought your wallets with you. Plus, acres and acres of free parking. Being the gateway to the West, St. Louis has always been a major node of retail. In the 1950s, as the new interstates were built, the city decided it was time to modernize. Nearly all shopping was done downtown, but the growth of the suburbs saw many customers move into St. Louis County. Despite this, the area had few options for shopping. Northland Shopping Center was opened in 1955 by the May Company. It was anchored by Famous Bar, the largest local department store. Their competitor, Sticks Baron Fuller, opened West Roads Mall the same year. They were about eight miles apart from each other. Northland was very north, in Jennings, Missouri. West Roads was in Richmond Heights, close to Midtown. Two local developers named Lewis and Milton Zarensky noticed this lack of options. The brothers were drafting up a new multi-million dollar shopping center for the county. They were the sons of Jaime Zarensky, who had a retail background of over 40 years. The brothers grew up in retail, which gave them a unique perspective into the shopping center boom. In 1954, they chose a 34-acre site in the suburb of Crestwood for its prime location on Route 66. Named Crestwood Plaza, it would be the first regional mall in the metropolitan area. It was described as a new retail district, featuring a distinct panoramic design. Construction began that April. Crestwood Plaza was one of the first to have a department store anchor, a radical idea at the time. Even more ambitious, the plan outlined two department stores at each end of the building, as well as a supermarket. The Zarenskys contracted many notable tenants, such as Sears, Kroger, Woolworth, Walgreens, Lerner, and Tom McGann. Perhaps their biggest innovation was the split-level parking, which allowed its anchors to have entrances on more than one level. Historically, department stores always saw the most traffic on the ground floor, but at Crestwood, shoppers could enter on any level. Crestwood Plaza first opened on March 21, 1957. It originally encompassed about 550,000 square feet of leasable space, free parking for over 2,000 cars, and about 14 stores. New stores opened almost every week, filling up the plaza as quickly as it was being built. The finished mall had room for 35 specialty stores, both national and local. In 58, the third phase of Crestwood Plaza was completed, featuring a new three-story anchor, Vanderverts, another local chain. Funny enough, many at the time were afraid having competing retailers so close together would create an undesirable atmosphere, but it proved even more popular. The plaza was a huge hit and made its customers beg the question, Why go downtown at all? It was a great point. Downtown meant traffic, troublesome and expensive parking, and even crime. Most St. Louisans had never seen anything like Crestwood Plaza before, and they flocked in droves. The mall's big success opened a floodgate. Their status as the region's number one mall wouldn't last long. Every local developer wanted their own Crestwood success story and began favoring large projects in the county. Just five miles away, South County Center was opened. Built by the May Company, it was anchored by Famous Bar and J.C. Penney. South County was not only bigger than Crestwood, but the whole structure was fully enclosed and air-conditioned. The next biggest contender came from the Zarenskys themselves. Their firm, High Cell Properties, opened Northwest Plaza in 1965. When it was finished, it was the largest mall in the world. The fountains, sculptures, and landscaping were also very impressive. 
It was a 14-mile drive up the road, one many shoppers opted to take. It was also right next to the airport. By 67, Crestwood's stores had doubled. When the land was bought, a few extra acres were included for later building. Crestwood finally expanded into this area, adding a fourth anchor, a three-level Styx Baron Fuller. This also included some indoor space, with room for several more specialty stores, including B. Dalton Bookseller, one of the first in the area. At about the same time, Vanderverts was having serious money problems. They buckled under the pressure and went bankrupt, closing all their stores, including the Crestwood branch. Thankfully, Famous Bar took their place soon after, adding a stronger and more relevant name to the plaza. Across the United States, mall mania was in full swing. Every new St. Louis mall was upstaging Crestwood, and existing competitors were expanding and updating throughout the 1970s. By the 80s, Interstate 44 was bringing lots of new traffic through Crestwood, and Hycel wanted the mall to have better appeal. The indoor wing had a $2.5 million extension. This saw the addition of 15 new stores, a multi-screen theater, and a restaurant. This was great, but it still left something to be desired. In recent years, Hycel had gone through a generational change. Mark Zarensky, son of Milton, and his cousin-in-law Lee Wagman were leading the firm. They figured that in order to really stick it to the other malls, Crestwood needed to get even bigger. They announced a $20 million expansion and renovation. A new retail building, parallel to the existing plaza, was constructed between Famous Bar and Sears. They stretched a roof overhead, enclosing the entire shopping center. When the work was done in 84, the addition added 50 new stores. A full food court was built underneath the mall, featuring several unique restaurants. Inside the new concourses, you could find just about any chain store you could think of. They even had Atari Adventure, an extensive video arcade. The finished mall dwarfed the original parking lot, now significantly downsized. Crestwood Plaza had become the ultra mall that had it all, but this expansion only did so much. The mall's desirability had always been tied to its prime location on Route 66. When it was built, Highway 66 was the main artery of America, and traffic was at an all-time high. Getting drivers off the interstate was harder. I-44 simply didn't give the plaza the same curb appeal. Even though they were now one of the largest enclosed malls in the area, no amount of rebuilding could move them to a better location. In the end, the Ultra Mall initiative only proved to hurt them. Meanwhile, Hycel set their eyes on the old West Roads Mall, which had a new owner, Dillard's. They bought out Styx Baron Fuller in 84, but lucky for them, Dillard's didn't want West Roads. They sold it to Hycel, who went about redeveloping the mall into a new, upscale, three-level enclosed center, the St. Louis Galleria. Now, Crestwood was flanked on the north and south by two mega malls. It was a little too close for comfort. Keep in mind that every new mall opened meant less shoppers were going to Crestwood, and it only got worse. If you could choose any time period to go to Crestwood Plaza, it would have to be the 1990s. New stores were coupled with even more attractions. In 93, Atari was out, and Exilorama set up shop. It was an indoor entertainment center aimed at the family. You could do everything from play video games, a round of laser tag, ride around in bumper cars, and even step into the world of virtual reality. Hycel was throwing everything at shoppers to keep them coming, and it helped, but bigger malls had what Crestwood had, and more. During the 90s, real estate consolidation was a big trend. Large public companies were buying up a lot of private land. St. Louis was a hot spot for this, and the biggest buyer was shopping center firm Westfield. In January 98, they bought Crestwood Plaza from Hycel. Together, Westfield owned nearly half the area malls, millions upon millions of square feet. Westfield renamed all the local malls with a prefix of Westfield Shopping Town. Westfield Shopping Town Crestwood was never quite the same mall again. 
Crestwood was still a powerhouse, but shoppers were going elsewhere, and the stores followed, creating a vicious cycle that made quick work of emptying the once thriving mall. Westfield bought a very workable shopping center, but its already falling traffic and profits were worsened by their management. They were more focused on building West County Center into a Galleria competitor, and Crestwood got whatever scraps of attention they had left. This moment was the turning point. The 21st century showed promise for every other Westfield mall except for Crestwood. West County was rebuilt from the ground up as a modern two-level mall. South County got a new Sears anchor. Mid Rivers and Chesterfield were also getting upgrades. Crestwood was stagnant. Seeing the writing on the wall, Famous Bar planned to close their Crestwood store, skipping out on their lease. Before they could, the May Company, their parent, was bought out by federated department stores. Their crown jewel was Macy's, which would replace Famous Bar as the brand was thrown away. Against all odds, Macy's renewed their lease and stayed at Crestwood. This was a big win, but it wasn't long before more hardship came their way. After years of declining sales, Dillard's closed their anchor store in August 2007. They'd never get another tenant to fill that space, and the leftover blight only accelerated the mall's decline. After this, Westfield put the mall up for sale. In 2008, the Chicago-based Centrum Properties bought Crestwood Plaza for a low $17.5 million. They renamed the mall Crestwood Court and went about trying to fix their vacancy problems. They teamed up with the Regional Arts Commission and began leasing some of the mall's vacant stores as part of Art Space, a community for local artists and musicians. This filled up some of the mall, but it was only a band-aid for a long-term plan. They planned to demolish most of the mall, but redevelop the space into a new complex. It would be an open-air lifestyle center, a very ambitious plan. Unfortunately, two big things stood in their way, the Great Recession and Macy's. In 2009, the Crestwood Macy's was one of multiple underperforming stores that they announced would be closed that year. The mall hung on for another three years, until the final straw. Sears closed their store in April 2012, ending a major era. The mall concourses were officially closed off in 2013, leaving LensCrafters, which had an outside entrance. Just a few months later, they closed too, leaving the mall completely vacant. The property was sold to Urban Street, another Chicago developer, for an even lower $3.6 million. Their proposal was similar, with more of a focus on mixed use with residential, including green space and entertainment venues. None of this would include the mall, which had been left rotting. Through 2017, the entire shopping center would be slowly demolished turning what was once the most promising development in the metro area to no more than a landfill. This April, ground finally broke on a new redevelopment plan. It's called Crestwood Crossing, a pretty basic plan, even cookie cutter, but I wish them the best of luck. After a decade of hemming and hawing, it was only a matter of time before a major housing developer like McBride took over. They're going to cram 81 single-family homes, a full-line Deerberg's grocery store, and much more in the mall's place. We can only hope that somewhere on site, the new district will pay homage to its predecessor, Crestwood Plaza, St. Louis's first regional shopping center and a big milestone in American retail history.